Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome back to Take the Initiative. I'm Rebel Trader, and today we've got a recorded uh, Top Cap match. We had Dylan versus uh, Dean AL, and Dylan was gracious enough to record for us and send me the video to do commentary over. So this is Dylan's list. It's Han 2 Blue. He's got some uh, some pretty interesting late game cards. You know, you know Crate Dragons, Chewies, uh, Redemptions. And he's on uh, Mace Windu as well. Um, also on pose, two pillage in the main deck, the third in the sideboard. Uh, this looks like a pretty standard and pretty solid build of Han. And uh, on DNL's side, he's also on Han, but a different Han, the Han 1 green. Uh, not running the disarm tack that we saw at <laughs> Chicago, but running some pretty interesting stuff. He's got uh, pretty much a full high-end suite uh, in the main, almost all in the main deck. Uh, he's got rule with respects in the sideboard. We'll see if that ends up making uh, an appearance. Uh, two change of heart in the main deck. Uh, DJ tech combo. Uh, and he's not like a best defender. He's not Akbar's though. But yeah, this this should be a, a very interesting, uh, very interesting matchup. So let's go ahead and uh, get started. So uh, here we have Daniel has drawn his hand. Oh, and I need to to actually press play on the video. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what mod they're playing on, but it looks nice. Uh, this is not an, an ideal hand for um, for Dylan here. And this is Dylan's perspective that we're watching. So he doesn't have a turn one play, but he's got a couple good turn two plays in Yoda and Cassian. I'm not sure why he's not uh, resourcing the Cassian. I probably would be doing that right away. Maybe I actually wants to keep both, but I, I, I think Chewie makes sense to resource here for sure. Rival Swall may or may not come up. I guess you know you might want to keep Cassian to, to keep your options open for four resources, but uh, doesn't really matter. It looks like Daniel has initiative. He's going to start not by ramping, but by playing a Cloud Rider. Um. Oh, I totally forgot that, that Han's ability could play one of these threes for two. <laughs> That's my mistake. But it looks like uh, he is going for... It looks like Yoda for two here. Which, I mean, it does trade well with the... It trades with the Cloud Rider, but you don't get to an extra turn with your um, four-star online unless you do it next turn. And then you'd have to use your Han ability again on the Cassian to get a play. All right, we're going into a new round. Daniel, or sorry, Dylan does pick up a Sabine here, which you could play Sabine plus. Um, who is actually going to resource the first throw? I was going to say you could play Sabine plus first throw, but not going for that play. I do think first throw is pretty good into you know this Han deck here because they oftentimes rely on the cards in their hand. But Yoda goes down here. Cloud Rider not going to base. I guess Daniel saying that he thinks he's the control here. And I think he might be right. And Han is going to cheat in a K2. And Daniel gets the resupply off. Dylan takes initiative and we're heading to a new round. Uh, and yeah, Dylan has initiative here. I don't know what he's, he's going for Sabine first before attacking with K2. As he's trying to, maybe he's trying to set up a, an attack on K2 into something that might come down. Now he's paying two for, it's going to be the A-Wing, Yoda, or Cassie, and he could do either, any of those three. And it's going to be Yoda. Take the damage. Dylan's got a, a pretty nice setup of, of units out here. And he's got three units to deal. And D, uh, Dylan's going to just crash his 
K2 into the Han and force Daniel to discard here. He's going to discard a DJ. Daniel goes to base and he's up to seven resources. Are we going to see, yep, Ewing reinforcement? That's this deck's classic play. He's going to bring out the big Han, deal with that Yoda. And Daniel's starting to establish a strong board presence here. And he killed Dylan's Yoda, which prints the which was the only force unit. Uh Dylan picks up a pillage here. Which could be interesting. If Daniel resources here, he could take the the last cards out of Daniel's hand. Which you may or may not want to do. It's a you don't get another play this round if you do that, but he may not have a better one. Dylan does not have an immediate out to this big Han unit. Daniel defeats his resources. Sabine is actually going to go into the Han first. I'm not going to lead with the pillage at least. Maybe he'll still use it eventually, but he's at least going to do something else first. Han goes to base and okay, we are going to see the pillage and Daniel does not play a card, which means both these cards are going to the discard pile. Home one and syndicate laggies, especially that home one. That's a good hit. So now Dylan can flip his Han. It's not particularly impactful right now. It's just a guy. And he's going to go to base. And Dylan's hand here is not... He doesn't have a lot of plays. He doesn't have any if this Han dies immediately. Yep, so now this Han is going to... Or maybe he has a Cassian in the resource. Oh, he should have a Cassian in the resource. So you can play that. Um, He's just also first going to force throw. Hits the reinforcement walker. That's a good one. So Dylan's going to be able to play Cassian, which is effectively going to leave him in the same spot as he was before. Replaces the resource, and it's Oopo. All right. And Cassian is just going to swing into... Han, which puts the Han in range of Mace or Chewy here. So now Dylan's up to seven resources, which means he can hard cast Mace or he can cheat out Chewy. And both of those deal with this Han unit. And Daniel's only got one card in hand. And it's going to be Mace. And Daniel's response is... Syndicate Lackeys. All right, now we're going up to eight resources. And this is starting to look like Dylan's game. He can... It looks like he's going to cheat out a crate Dragon here. And Dylan's got... Daniel, sorry, has one card left in hand. Uh, You know, his deck does run a lot of... Things that have smuggles. So maybe he's got some stuff in the resource row. But one card to deal with a monster like this, that's going to be tough. And uh, Dill's got a redemption to start healing some. And he's got two Chewies in the resource row and another Mace in hand. While Dylan's only done three damage to the base. You know, he's he's still got quite the advantage built up. 
so tech comes out of the resource row. That's one of the cards that can get Daniel back in the game. But it has to be followed up by some way to out this crate dragon. And Daniel's list does not run a lot of those. All right, we're going to see Falcon out of the resource row. Crate dragon going to ping the base. And we're going into a new round. But did you know I was able to play? Uh, play two cards that round without um, discarding any. So the tech dies right away. Uh, overall damage goes to the, goes to the base. That prevents DNL from accessing his resource row, at least for now. Han Solo comes in, and that actually does deal with the crate. And Dylan is going to decide to kill the... Um, kill the, the Han instead of dealing 6 to base, or 7 to base. Chewie comes out of the resource row, kills that falcon. And Tiniel is, I mean, he's somewhat managed to stabilize, but he's still definitely at a disadvantage. This Han deck often has to use its units to deal with everything that comes up, because it, it doesn't have really any direct removal. All right, another tech comes out of the resource row. That could be met immediately by a mace. It's just going to be takedown, not mace. All right. That's two techs gone from Dylan's perspective. And Han comes in. It looks like he's probably not going to attack. And we're going to see make an opening onto the Han. And that's going to allow him to be killed by this Chewie, who's now up to 8 power from his grit. And another K2 is going to hit the board from Han's ability. And onward we go, and another Crate Dragon and another Redemption picked up. Daniel might just have to call it here. It's going to be so hard to get through all of this. But I mean, an even more immediate threat is this 8 power Chewy and the 4 power K2. Change of Heart going to take the Chewy. All right, K2 goes to base. I guess Dina, Dylan's going to let this Chewy attack base. Dylan is then going to follow up with a redemption. And is going to basically nullify that Chewy attack by healing eight. Daniel is forced to claim. Force throw, discards the last card. It's a spare the target. Dylan gets his Chewy back. And Dylan, does he have another change of heart? No, no, he's got Ewing reinforcement, though. That could potentially save him.
We'll see what he pulls. It is uh, not enough. And Daniel's going to scoop. And Dylan takes game one here. And I'm going to go ahead and see if I can cut through the sideboarding in OBS here. All right. Just in the interest of getting this done. Uh, you can take a look at the list either in the description or if you just want to rewind and, and look at them, they're there. But they're also linked in the description. Uh, and looks like DNL starts with a claim and Dylan opens with uh, A-Wing. DL goes for ooh tech. All right. On is it gonna cheat out Yoda and we're gonna see force throw. Gonna hit DNL early. He's got the Yoda out. And he's going to call on, he's going to do it on DNL, not going to throw his own redemption at this attack. And Kira gets discarded. That's four to the tech. And anybody's going to start racking up some damage while it can. This is an awkward hand for, for Dylan. He's going to end up resourcing a redemption. He's got a second one in hand, so I think that's fine. Daniel's got initiative. He's not he doesn't have enough resources to, to DJ here. If you're Daniel though, and you do, especially if you have the DJ, you really want to protect this tech. Uh but he's not. He's just gonna kill that Yoda. Yoda gets a card draw. DDL plays another tech out of the resource row. All right. If there's another DJ there, could get ugly. All right. Dylan takes the initiative, so at least he's going to be able to do something with his resource first before DDL takes it, assuming that he does. But if, I mean, if DDL does have the ability to take the resource here, um, Dylan has no way of getting it back. So Dylan's, instead of playing anything for five, he's just going to deploy his Han. And out of the resources. Oh, that's not it. And that's it. DJ. Steals a resource. And it's an A-Wing. Okay. Not the Cassian that was there. And Dylan's got no way to kill the DJ. So Han's going to go after Tech. Han is going to flip early for using his ability, that is. Han kills Han and then is going to put a resource here, which is going to be the one that kills Dylan's resource. Sometimes uh, deploying your Han early is even when you've DJ attacked is, um, can be risky because you end up going into the next round with DJ's ability, with DJ's resource not having been destroyed. Like if, if, I mean, I don't think there's anything in, in Dylan's deck that does it, but imagine, especially in like against Kira or, or Control, you don't, you really do not want your Han to die before he gets to set up your resource defeat next round. Oh, 
But looking at Dylan's list, I think Daniel made the determination that he was pretty safe to flip Han. And I think he was right. Especially without a forced unit on the table. Yeah. So now Dylan's been deramped by that DJ. Dudale's at seven resources, which means we could see a Ewing or just a Han unit play this trade out. Uh, DDL did um, suicide his own Han here. Not sure what the rationale for that was. Or, no, did Dylan. Oh, Daniel's at seven resources. I'm not exactly sure what happens. It looks like we're going to see seven resources for Sinhia Lackeys pop up. Take out that Cassian. Uh, Cassian, like a Hydra, cut off one head. Two more take its place. I guess in this case, just one more. But Daniel is, is in a much better position at this point in the game than, than he was last time. Dylan opens with Cassian into the lackeys to stop the big hit to the base. DJ goes to the base. Aiming also goes to the base. This aiming has steadily been racking up some damage for Dylan. And there's reinforcement walker from DNL. And what's the hit? It is... Someone that Daniel's gonna draw. Uh, fell the dragon deals with a uh, with the walker nicely, and ooh, crate dragon picked up for for Dylan here. He's a, a resource off from playing it at least. He does have a force throw live in hand this turn, but Daniel's hand is actually so big this time around that it doesn't really matter as much. I mean, before you were trying to play hand control to get Daniel down to to the ability to do nothing, but this game he succeeded so well in um in keeping things. Where they need to be. All right, Kira comes down off this home one. And she's going to call Fell the Dragon. Yoda going to base. I think that might be a bit preemptive. I would probably be wanting to play this... Um, Oh, yeah, he's just going to actually play the <laughs> the Fellow Dragon for 7. I thought he was on 6, but no, he's on 7. So that does work. He just pays full price, buffed by Kira for the the Fell to take out the uh, home one. But DDL still has two units on board that show no signs of dying soon. Although Dylan just picked up an Avenger. And he still has that Cray Dragon. As so now he can play either of those this turn by cheating them out with Han's ability. Ooh, another home one coming back. This time playing Tech out of the resource row. I mean, what I was saying about Avenger sort of makes sense, but there's not a lot of targets for it right now.
And what's going to happen? Yoda looks like might be going first here. But I don't know who he'd go into. All right, looks like we're just going to see a crate dragon for uh, Dylan. Which does present a threat, but not necessarily an immediate lethal threat. Uh, whereas Dnail is very, very close to, to having a lethal threat. Looks like DJ going to go into the crate. Same with Yoda. And then Kira goes into the crate as well. The Kira, the crate's actually still alive. And Dylan, I think, is going to end up... Oh, Dnail had the, the Cloud Rider to get it. Okay. I was going to say Dylan... Might end up being in a pretty strong position here, but he, it was not to be. Oh, it looks like daniel has been forgetting his home one restore. Oh, uh, looks like they got it though. So we're moving on to the next round. Dylan's got to find a way to deal with this home one. It's not going to deal with himself. Uh, he's got a, a force throw that he can play this turn. And he potentially throw one of his big ships at it. And that's like an okay play. Interesting. He's going to go force throw the make an opening at tech. Which means Avenger can now come down for eight. And Dylan was at nine. Uh and Dylan I mean you're just giving Daniel the chance to to play a unit and block the Avenger. That's I'm doing my math wrong, right? And then can he can still play Avenger. Looks like Kira gonna be played calling redemption. Oh, Avengers villain. I totally forgot that it's 11 cost in this deck. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, you can't play Redemption this turn, though. Um, although not anymore because of that Kira. And it looks like, uh, yeah, Dylan was was trying to hit the, the home one here. So that makes it vulnerable to an Avenger um, attack or any sort of combat with... Uh, sorry, not Avenger, with Redemption. It's late. <laughs> All right, and onward we go to a new round. Bringing with it new adventure, new cards, and new friendship. <laughs> but before we go, uh, Daniel is going to use another Cloud Rider to remove this Yoda. All right, um, we're at 10 resources now, right? Which means you can see an Avenger. And what are we gonna see here? Chewy out of the resource row, yep. And that deals with the home one. Chewy is, is such an important card in this deck. And he's, he's, I think, a major reason to play Blue Hero right now. There aren't a ton of them, but he is one. Being able to, there's, I mean, him versus Dooku is just so much of a difference, right? Like, Dooku kills anything with four or less, greater with five or less. The five makes so much of a difference. Here it doesn't really, because the home one had four health left anyway. And this one's turning into a grindy one. DNL, I don't know if we've seen any Ewing reinforcements out of DNL, but he's managed to push quite a bit of, of damage in Dylan's base here. Could go up to as high as 25. 
this turn. Oh, 28. Uh, with that Falcon. And, oh, there's another surprise strike. I think that's going to be lethal. And DNL sending this one to a game three. All right, we're getting started with game three, and we're going to see the A-Wing come down here from Dylan. Uh, resource looks like Sabine and uh, and the Conquered Dawn Interceptors. Those are, are fine uh, fine resources here. So A-Wing is is kind of risky. It, it runs the risk of getting hit by Falcon, but I think going to the ground might be even riskier just because of all the different ground things, like that crowd, Cloud Rider's here. Cloud Rider would have been a, a perfect answer to Sabine. Uh, but Dylan getting the A-Wing down has that advantage here of not being hit by the Cloud Rider. It's hard to say who's the aggro deck here. All right, it looks like we're just going to see uh, the two players trade damage into the base here. And then Yoda comes out and immediately gets hit by a <laughs> spare the target. Uh, that allow it's gonna allow that Yoda would have would have been a perfect trade into Cloud Rider there. So the the spare the target makes sense here. And I think we might just see the same thing. Yeah, three and three. And it's back to to Dylan, and he's gonna play the Yoda again, and we got a a repeat of the last round. And Tech. And Dylan takes the initiative. And we are going to see, yeah, take down. Just get that tech out of here so you don't get DJ'd. Um, yeah. And it looks like, again, we are going to see uh, these this aiming in the Cloud Rider trade hits to the base. And Daniel is going to go up to six, it looks like. So his Han can flip here. Uh, Dylan's Han can also flip here uh, on five. Yoda is finally going to take out that Cloud Rider. And there it is. There's the Han. Uh, Dylan's going to play the Force Throw with Yoda as the Force Unit, which means whatever gets discarded here is going to do damage to the base. Ooh, five. That's big. That means that the Yoda trades with him next turn. Right now he's just going to go to base. And make it another resource. We'll see if um, maybe DNL has a Han unit to, to take. I mean, I guess like either of these. Yeah, so Han unit is going to take out the Han leader, it looks like. But Yoda still trades with the Han, with DNL's Han leader next turn. Even if that happens. Uh, although, is, is DNL just. Yeah, it looks like DNL is actually going to take out the Yoda instead. Uh, probably prevent the restore and the potential force throw follow up next turn. And so we are going to see the Han leader just take out the Han leader. And this is a an, an, uh, rough hand for, for Dylan here. He's going into six resources. He's got the Luke Skywalker, which could be a six resource play if this Han survives, but it's likely not going to. Um... Uh, he did. He was thinking about resourcing the cargo juggernaut, but decided to keep it instead. That's a six drop. No red unit to get the healing, or sorry, no blue unit to get the healing. But still there. Yep. So Han unit is going to clear this Han leader. And it looks like we're just going to see the juggernaut come down in response. Yep. And Daniel gets to use this Han leader again. So he's going up to seven, I believe. Yep, seven. So we could see a Ewing here. Yep, it's a Ewing. And Ewing's going to bring out Tech Falcon. 
and a Greta. Wow, that is a, a, a very, very good pull for D-Nail there. The Falcon's going to be able to take out the A-Wing, and Tech is just going to be great to set up for the future. And Greedo is just the, the cherry on top here. Falcon's going to clear that A-Wing. Uh, Dylan top decks a pillage here, which I mean, Daniel's only got one card in hand since he did decide to resource. So I think we might just see the proactive Luke. Yeah, I mean, it clears either Falcon or Greedo. The cargo juggernaut isn't killing much of anything here. It can't run over tech, it can't run over, Gre it can run over Greedo, but it can't run over the Han. It looks like we're just going to see Fell the Dragon to, to clear this Han, and uh, I guess Dylan still has a play of, of Han in the K2, which is not bad here, but Diniel has the chance to use tech to generate some advantage off of that smuggle keyword. And yep, there's just the Han in K2 from Dylan. You know, looking at his resources, thinking what he can pull with tech here. Um, potentially, I mean, like a, there's not a lot that's great here. So the Juggernaut is just going to hit that tech for four. Doesn't kill him, unfortunately. And now it's Dylan's turn to make a play. And it looks like it's going to be out of the resource row for six. Uh, oh, Kira. Interesting. And Kira is presumably going to call Luke. Yep, Luke. And Dylan gets the initiative, and onward we go. Uh, Crate Dragon picks up for uh, Dylan. But he's he's taking so much damage, he really needs to, to start stabilizing. He could cheat out the Crate Dragon this turn, but... He's facing 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 damage. That's lethal. Uh, oh, the Falcon's going to bounce back. But oh, with Falcon in hand, it's still lethal. Uh, even if just barely. And Dylan is going to just crash the K2 into the tech. You know, it looks like he's going for the discard based on Daniel's motions. Yep. And that's a Rogue Squadron Skirmisher. I don't see that often. And a reinforcement walker from Daniel. That's big. Uh, Dalen does have the, the Felda Dragon in hand to clear it. And the Juggernaut here looks like it's just going to get a chance to finish off this Greedo. Perhaps a mistake there by Diniel going to, like, not going to base there immediately with the with the Greedo. And Pillage going to come down, clear those two cards out of the hand, including Falcon and Surprise Strike. Those are both pretty big ones. And Fell is going to take out um, the Walker. And it looks like Dylan just resourced this um, this Luke, thinking I'm just not gonna kill that Kira. And like with this hand and and setup, he's not going to. <laughs> and Dylan's or Daniel's uh, card out of hand is Falcon.
And that's going to be matched by Redemption. Just going to be heal five, it looks like. So yeah, so that'll tank a, a hit from the Falcon there. That's big. This could be what um, Dylan needs to turn the corner. Depending on what Daniel's play here is. It looks like a attack out of the resource row. Dylan takes initiative. And he might be able to pillage again here. Ooh, he also picks up an Obi-Wan. That's big for stuffing up this ground arena. Looks like he resources the pillage. Not even going to go for that play. I think it's unnecessary, so I think it's right. And forces with me. <laughs> That's going to clear the tech. And it leaves just enough resources open for this Obi-Wan Kenobi. Surprise strike, Falcon, but that's just going to trade with the Redemption. Daniel's basically been grinded out here, I think. Dylan is is very close to being able to win this one. Um, he should be able to stick this Crate Dragon no problem this turn, and from that point on, Daniel doesn't really have a good out to it. Maybe Waylay or, or Spare the Target, but then it'll just come back out again the next turn. Daniel's not close enough to winning, and he doesn't have the ability to kill it, really. Uh, Echo Base Defender, that's going to be a nuisance. Nine, and... Oh. He's having second thoughts, but that was almost it. Uh, it's going to be Luke. That shouldn't work, because Akira. Yep. Oh, but he does have enough resources to fully play it with through the Kira. So he's going to play that and clear the defender. Not going with the Crate Dragon. He might not need to, though. He's got a lot of damage on board with just these two, three guys now. Kira heads into the Obi. Uh, they both survive, and DJ coming out for D-Nail out of ha the hand. Juggernaut hits. That's six to base. Any one of these three units is lethal here. Does D-Nail have the surprise super laser blast in his hand to clear it? No, he does not. So Dylan's going to take this one down. Thank you very much for tuning in, and, of course, remember to take the initiative.